Okay, thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, as you'd be aware, uh, this morning the coroner has handed down his findings in relation to the death of Zara Abraham today. And it's clear from those findings, and as we expected, that South Australia Police has been criticised for the level of service that we provided to the family during the course of their domestic violence experience. We don't resolve from that. Um, we have already, uh, on several occasions, highlighted the fact that uh, we recognise failures in the level of service that was provided and we have already taken steps to make changes to the way we address domestic violence issues and make sure that our policies and procedures are reflected in the service we provide to people who are experiencing domestic violence. Yeah. You described it as appalling. How would you describe it? I don't think I've ever hidden from the fact that our service in this particular case was appalling. Um, I used different words during the coroner's inquest, but certainly that was the, the sentiment that was being conveyed, that uh, we didn't do a good enough job. And Whilst we may never know whether or not the failures on the part of South Australia Police directly led to the death of Zara, we can be sure that those failures provided a degree of uh, impunity for uh, Ziola to actually take the course of action that he did. And for that we are very sorry and we have apologised to the family. What are some of the changes you plan to implement? Uh, there are wide ranging changes. We've identified about 48 different changes that need to occur within SAPOL. Some of those changes are already well underway. The most significant is that we've developed a, a domestic violence portfolio uh, of which I chair, and that is designed to ensure that the, uh, the focus on domestic violence and our operational response uh, is complementary to our policies and procedures, and that we provide the level of service that people have a right to expect. We're also reviewing all of our policies and procedures, and we're making changes to those so that we know that our operational police can understand what those expectations are and have no excuse for not delivering on those expectations. In addition to that, there are reporting mechanisms, uh, coding facts that we're looking at, as well as uh, other more uh, technical elements that we think will improve the level of service provided to people who are experiencing domestic violence. What about the coroner's recommendation that the criminal justice sections be staffed by trained legal professionals in addition to or instead of the uniformed police? Uh, we are actually already uh, in the process of recruiting uh, solicitors to work in our prosecution function. And having looked at the, uh, the coroner's recommendations, we'll be taking into consideration the scope and duties of those legal practitioners as they come into our prosecution function. We will continue to have prosecutors, police prosecutors, pr providing a service within the uh, magistrates' courts, but we will have a look at how we uh, deploy these new solicitors that are coming on board. What emotions did you feel when you read the coroner's findings? Uh, disappointment. As I said in the coroner's inquest, uh, we were extremely disappointed with the service we provided. Um, this, there, was, there were no revelations in the coroner's findings. So we did a, a significant investigation when we became aware of the issues around our level of service in this case, and that was followed by a corporate review in relation to how we could make improvements. That corporate review was finalised early this year, and the recommendations were signed off by our senior executive, and we've already begun to implement those recommendations. So as as disappointing as it is that we are the subject of the criticism levelled by the coroner, we accept that criticism and we've identified it a long time ago. This is not new to us, but that doesn't make it right. So this is systemic and ongoing, and should this man have been arrested before? Sorry, can you repeat that question? Were those failures systemic? Were they ongoing? Because in this case, known for a long time, were there multiple levels of failures in, in this case? Uh, I think that's been recognised by the coroner and by ourselves, that there were several instances where police officers didn't fulfil their obligations and provide the level of service that this family deserved. Now, some of those were significant, those failures. Others were, in the scheme of things, not as uh, significant. However, when you put it all together, it makes for a, a systemic failure in this particular case. Uh, we're confident that we are making steps in the right uh, direction to ensure that all of our police officers understand the priority we place on ensuring an effective and appropriate response to domestic violence. And there have been significant changes since the death of Zara and even more changes coming as we go forward. Do you believe those changes are already starting to, to work? Absolutely. Uh, and the most significant change that we've had to practice is the introduction of family safety meetings, where high-risk domestic violence uh, victims cases are reviewed by a multi-agency team on a fortnightly basis to ensure that the responses provided not just by police but by all agencies 
is appropriate in the circumstances and they identify where there are deficiencies that need to be addressed. That's the biggest, most significant change that's occurred. And I, wouldn't, I would be confident to say that had we had family safety meetings in place when Zara Abrahimzadeh was a victim of domestic violence, that we might have seen a different outcome. Uh, my criticisms of our members in some cases relate directly to the fact that they fail to fulfil their obligations, their, their, their statutory obligations in terms of investigating and responding to crime. Now, this is a domestic violence incident, but the obligations that rest with police officers is to investigate serious crime. And whilst it's DV, it is also serious crime. And there was a failure to fulfil their obligations in doing some of those simple elementary things that should be done in investigating a serious offence. So Regardless of simple and elementary, the coroner's actual criticism comes down to one simple bullet point, that Ziao Abraham today should have been arrested. Do you agree that he should have been arrested? Absolutely. There were multiple occasions when we could have intervened in that regard and we failed to do so. The coroner coron says that all domestic violence calls to Safe Bowls call centre should be handled by sworn police officers. What does that mean for the future of civilian operators? Uh, that is one of the recommendations that we'll be reviewing and giving consideration to in terms of how we structure our business and our processes. At this point in time, I would have to say that there's no immediate change planned for how we staff our call centre, but we are going to be taking that recommendation on board and having a look at what that means. So there's the potential for those civilian operators to get the sack? No, I wouldn't say that's a uh, potential at all. It would relate to how we supervise our civilian calls, call takers and the level of training they receive. And we've already started to increase that level of training. So. Um, my comment for that recommendation is that we will take it on board and we will review it and look at it in terms of how that impacts our business. How significant has this case been for the future of the way, the way that police handles domestic violence? Well, I've described this uh, particular incident, the death of Zara, and the subsequent investigation that we conducted, the corporate review and the coronial inquest as a watershed for SAPOL. This is a change in the way we look at domestic violence. Uh, this has been growing over time, but this has created a momentum that can't be ignored. Our entire workforce needs to recognise that we take domestic violence seriously, that we seek to intervene at every opportunity to prevent people from becoming victims of serious crimes through domestic violence. Are you adequately resourced? I mean, if you're attending 10,000 incidents a year, can you cope with that? Uh, across the board, my answer is yes. But we are also looking at our resources in specialist domestic violence areas. As a result of our own review, we are uh, examining the workloads, the obligations that fit within those particular specialist areas, and we're going to be making decisions about what the, the resource allocation might look like as we go forward. There's also concern that people from culturally diverse backgrounds are overrepresented in these areas. Will you be doing more to try to tackle the, the difficulties of taking on these sorts of cases where there might be a culture of secrecy or it's harder for you to penetrate? Uh, that, that comes down to the training regime that we're developing uh, across the board. We're changing our training for our recruits. Uh, we're changing training for general duties police officers um, to update their, their knowledge and understanding of domestic violence issues, including uh, as it relates to people from culturally diverse backgrounds. And we're also enhancing the training for specialists who are going to be working in the field of domestic violence. Uh, these things don't happen overnight. We're developing those, those modules of training and they'll be implemented as we go forward. Importantly, we've increased our recruit training course from a seven month period to a one year period and we've done that in recognition of the complexities of policing and the need for our uh, general duties police officers when they graduate to have an understanding of a range of different aspects that impact on the community. One of those is domestic violence. So there's going to be a significant change in how we deal with domestic violence in a training environment for probationary constables. Do you Last need week, specialists to deal with ethnic communities, do you think? Uh, we already tap into people from, from those communities to assist us in providing the, our services and where that's an opportunity that will be explored further. Last week in WA there was the case of Andrew Pickett, um, almost similar circumstances. They complained to the police for a year um, and nothing was done. Now Andrew Pickett's family is considering legal action against that state's police force and also the state. Are you worried about similar legal action in this case directed at St Paul? Uh, look, we'll just have to see if that comes. Uh, clearly we'd support any uh, inquiry in that regard um, and we'll deal with it through our, our normal mechanisms. But as I've said before, we've admitted the failures in this particular case. We've made an apology to the family and uh, our resolve is to actually make things different so we don't experience the same thing again or a, a victim of domestic violence doesn't have to experience the same level of poor service delivery that we saw in this case. Do you think they have a strong case? 
Sorry. Will there be a disciplinary action against those officers who are involved in this case who failed to fulfil their duties? The officers concerned in this particular case, uh, many of those have been the subject of disciplinary action already. That, that, that was dealt with quite some time ago. No, I just wanted to ask, if, do you think that a strong case, based on what you said, whether the family has a strong case for compensation? Look, it's not for me to comment on the, the merits of the, any application they make. It, and it, it remains to be seen whether they actually pursue that course of action and what the basis upon that, that um, litigation might be. But as I've said, you know, we've admitted our failures. Uh, we've put our hand up and said we could have done things much better. And it's my intention to make sure that SAPOL doesn't uh, expose itself to this criticism in future by failing to provide a service to people who really need it. Commissioner, can I just ask a question on another matter, and that's the five missing immigration kids. The